Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. DAF Zion contains two related sugyas. The first sugya is coding a brisa, which lists four additional types of Rosh Hashanah that are not mentioned in our Mishnah. Again, our Gemara is still commenting on the mission at the beginning of the Masechta that listed Rosh Hashanahs. So we've got four or more here, three, and a machok is about the fourth one. The Gemara will explain how each of them is known, what is the source for each of them, and why our Mishnah did not list these four. This will take up the first Amud and part of the second Amud, and then we'll refer back to our Mishnah, we'll discuss the Rosh Hashanah of Meisr Behema. The Gemara will note that it's a machokis, and the Gemara will therefore try to figure out who is the author of our Mishnah. We'll have a couple of problems, because depending on how you list the author of the Mishnah, you may end up with five Rosh Hashanahs, and not four, and the Gemara will offer three resolutions to that problem. So first, let's begin, we have a Brisa, and the Brisa says that there are four additional types of Rosh Hashanahs, Rosh Hashanah for Chadashim, Rosh Hashanah of Months, Rosh Hashanah of Iburin, that's when you... Uh, make the year into a leap year, adding a month to a year, Rosh Hashanah to make to a leap year. The Gemara understands that that means when you begin calculating whether it should be a leap year or not. The Gemara will change that understanding. The Gemara then has Rosh Hashanah of Trumas Shkalim. That's when you start bringing new coins to put in the box for the year's worth of Karbanos. Uh, the Halacha is that you can only use coins from this year. You should use coins from this year. And therefore, there's got to be a time when the year calculation begins. It's another Rosh Hashanah. And the last one is Rosh Hashanah of Schiros Batim, when you uh, calculate a year as far as a rental. If somebody rents a house for this year, when is the year over? So Gemara says, all of these are on Rosh Chodesh Nisan. The first of the month of Nisan provides Rosh Hashanah for all these four halachos. Gemara so says, okay, why do we, what is the source for each of these, and why does our Mishnah not list them? Now, the last one in this Brisa, Schiris Batim, the Gemara, the uh, Brisa, that's a Machlokas. There's a Yesh Omrim that brings that. So you also have to understand why the Tanakama didn't list that one. So the Gemara first says, okay, let's talk about Chadashim. That means that this is Rosh Hashanah for the month. That is to say that the first month is the month of Nisan. So therefore, the first of Nisan is Rosh Hashanah of the month. So the Gemara says, how do you know that Nisan is the first month of the year? So the is going to try bringing a few sources from this. We're going to have two from the Torah, which we will reject, and then we will have six from Navi. So the first one is, the Torah clearly says, It says this month is the first of the month. It's month number one of all the months of the year. Now, what does it say further? We don't know which month this is referring to, but what it says right after this, it says, It says to take sheep, take a lamb, tie it to your bed for the carbon Pesach. Well, it doesn't actually tie it to your bed, but it says take a lamb and set it aside to be used for the carbon Pesach. So here he was telling, Hashem was telling Moshe to tell Kai Yisrael to set aside a carbon for Pesach. Now, we still don't know that that's in the month of Nisan necessarily, but we do know is that Pesach should be in the month of Nisan. How do we know that? Because it says, Shemar is Chodesh Aviv. It says to keep it in the Aviv, keep it in the springtime. So the, the springtime must be the month of Nisan. When else is the springtime? Now, the word Aviv doesn't mean springtime necessarily. The word Aviv means ripe, when the fruits, the grain is ripening in the fields. So that's in the month of uh, Nisan. So Gemara says, well, how do you know? Maybe it's referring to the month of Eir. So Gemara says, what do you mean, month of Eir? Month of year is in the springtime, but month of year there's nothing ripening. Aviv means ripening. Everything is ripe already. Someone says, well, maybe it's the month of Adar. There's some grain that ripens early and it ripens in the month of Adar. Someone says, okay, some grain, but most grain ripens in the month of Nisan. Someone says, well, does, the, uh, does it say the month in which m- most grain is ripe? It says the month in which there is ripening. That could be Adar. I know it's not Adar. Adar also has ripening. Sigmara so says, all right, so I'll give you a new source. This source comes from the Pasuk describing the Antif of Sukkis. And it says, On the 15th day of the 7th month, so when you're gathering the grain of the field. Now, when do we gather a grain? We gather a grain before the winter. We don't want it to sit out in the field and rot. Over the summer, it's drying. That's what we need. We need for it to dry. But when the rainy season comes in, we gather it all in. So people gather in the month of Tishrei. So this must be referring to the month of Tishrei. It says when you're gathering. Now, it calls it the 7th month. If Tishrei is the 7th month, Count backwards, Nisan must be the first month. So Gemara says, well, how do you know that it's Tishrei? Maybe it's Cheshvan. Gemara says, Cheshvan, nobody's gathering. All the gatherings finished before Cheshvan. Gemara says, well, maybe it's El. Some people gather early. Some grain could be early. Gemara says, what are you talking about? Most grain is gathered in the month of 
Tishrei, the verse is most grain. But who says that you still can't call the month that you're gathering could still refer to El. Some people are gathering. So the Gemara says, all right, you're right. So we don't have any source from the Torah. We'll have to go to Navi. The Gemara brings six psukim which clearly identify the name of the month and the number that it is. And therefore we know that we must have started counting from the month of Nisan. The first is from Zechariah. It says, Biyom Esen Barabala Ashtei Asr Chodesh is the 11th month. Hu Chodesh Shvat. Shvat is the 11th month. Nisan must be the first month. Another source, this one's Rabbi Bar Ula. Um, from Megillah says, Esther Vati Lakach Esther Al HaMelech HaChash Varesh HaBais Machosei B'Chodesh HaSiri 10th month. Hu Chodesh Teves. 10th month is Teves. Then he's the first month of Nisan. Rabbi Kahana says, but uh, again, Zechariah, Barabas of the Chodesh Hachi, ninth month. When is that? Be Kislev. It says that that's Kislev. So the, again, Nisa must be the first month. Rachab Yaakov says, back in Esther, calling Sivan the third month. Again, Nisa must be the fourth month. Ravashi says from here, he pull poor who are girl of Nehaman, Yom, Yom, Mechadish, Chodish, a Chodish name was Sir, Chodish Ador, calling Adar the twelfth month. Obviously, Nisa is the first month. And the Gemara's last source. Is also from Miguel Esther, the same apostle actually. It says, It's actually the first words in the Pusik. The first month, which is the month of Nisan. So there it's clear. So I says, Well, that one's so clear. Just straight out. The first month is the month of Nisan. Why don't you just bring that? Why didn't everybody bring that one? The Morris says, oh, well, that might be a, that might not be a proof. You might call Nisan the first month because it's the first of Haman's plan. That's when he began working on his plan. So maybe that's why it's called the first month. Now it's counting the first month of the Torah, just the first month of Haman's strategy. Okay, fine. So now we have a source. We have a source that the month of Nisan is the first month. Now, why did our Mishnah not list this as a Rosh Hashanah? The Gemara says, simple, our Mishnah is not listing Rosh Hashanahs for months. Not interested in what's the first month. It's listing the beginning day of the year as far as the cycle of the year. What's the first month? No, it's not It's not on the things that our Mishnah is listing. Okay, now the Gemara goes to the next thing in our Bryce's list, and that was that the, month, the first of the month of Nisan is Rosh Hashanah Le'ibur. It's the first time for making the year into a leap year. So the Gemara says this means to say that you can calculate, you can start calculating whether or not the coming year is a leap year on Rosh Chodesh Nisan. The says it's not true. You're not allowed to calculate so early. People are going to forget by the time you get to Adar that there's supposed to be an extra month. The earliest you can calculate is Rosh Hashanah, as the first of Tishrei, and even that you can only do when you have no uh, choice, you're afraid you won't be allowed to convene a basin if you wait any later. So Gemara says, when Achim Yitzchak explains, when we say that the first month of Nisan is the Rosh Hashanah for Iburin, we mean that you can no longer make the previous year a leap year. Once you get into the first of Nisan, there will no longer be another Adar. You can't turn the current Nisan month into the second month of Adar. You can't say, I changed my mind, this is not Nisan, this is Adar. As long as Adar is still going, you can still say there's going to be a second Adar after this. Once Adar is over and it's Nisan, you can no longer add another Adar. So it's the Rosh Hashanah, it's the first beginning of the cycle when you can't do Ibar Hashanah anymore. You can no longer make a leap year out of the previous year. So the says it's important to teach us because there are some who said that you can't do it after pace after Purim anymore. Once Purim goes by, you can't add another uh, Adar. So we're saying not like that. We're saying you can add as long as it's Adar. The reason they say it is because they're afraid is because since Purim time, people start to learn Helchus Pesach. It's 30 days before Pesach. So all the speeches are now in Helchus Pesach. So people are going to not listen. If you tell them there's going to be an extra Adar and Pesach's not going to be for another month later, people aren't going to listen. They're going to make Pesach in the month of Adar base. So uh, this mission comes to teach me, this Bryce comes to teach me, you don't have to worry about that, because people understand that the calculation wasn't fully finished yet, and therefore the uh, change is not necessarily a problem. So Bryce says, you know, we understand, therefore, what Iburin means, and we understand why it's the first of the month of Nisan, but we don't understand why our mission didn't list it. And Bryce says, our mission didn't list Rosh Hashanah when things stop. Our mission listed Rosh Hashanah when things begin. Okay, next halacha is Trumas Shkalem. When you start the new, when you start using the new Shkalem, you can't use the old Shkalem anymore to buy Karbanos. Tzibor, public Karbanos. So, we had said that that is the beginning of the month of Nisan. The Gemara says, what's the source for that? The Gemara quotes a Pasuk, describing the carbon, the bringing of the carbon for Rosh Chodesh, and it says, Zosal is Chodesh, Bechacho, Lechacho, Yashon. It says, Chodesh, Chodesho, Chodesh. Lots of Chodesh is there. The Gemara says, the Rosh is as follows. Chadesh, bring new, and bring new Karbanos, of Chadasha, Chadesh Chadasha, you should renew, refresh your collection, and renew Karbanos 
from now. When is now? So it says Shana here, and it says Shana in a different pasuk that says Rishon Olachem Lachod Shei Hashana. And therefore, we learn just like this Shana. That Shana is referring to Nisan. This Shana is referring to Nisan. That's when you should refresh the collection of bringing new kabbanos. So Gemara says, well, maybe it's referring to Tishrei. Tishrei is also referred to as Shana. It says Mirashis Hashana, Dachos Shana. Mar says, yeah, but here it says Chod Hashana. This pasuk said Zosal is Chodesh Bechodesh Lachod Shei Hashana, and said Rishon Olachem Lachod Shei Hashana. Your pasuk about Tishrei didn't say Chod Shei Hashana, just said Shana. So that's not what it's referring to. Now, why did our Mishnah not want to uh, list this Rosh Hashanah? So the Gemara first quotes a couple of halachos, uh, well, one halacha with a couple of sources that will help us understand that. Um, Rabbi Huda Mishmuel says, and the surprise that says so as well, that if you want to bring a Karbanos Tzibor in the first of Nisan, from Nisan and on, you should bring from the new coins. You do not have to. You will lose a mitzvah if you don't. You have a mitzvah to bring from the new coins. If you bring from the old coins, it's not puzzle. You're still with yaitza, but you're supposed to bring from the new ones. Now, we also add halacha here, that if an individual brings his own carbon, it's okay. He can use his own funds. As long as he donates it to the tzibor, then he can serve as a carbon tzibor. Someone says, obviously, once he gave it to the tzibor, why shouldn't he be able to do that? Because you might think he may not give it with a whole heart, and therefore it's still his, and it would be possible to be a carbon tzibor. comes to teach me that you're allowed to do that. Now, we understand why our mission didn't want to list this, because it's not a solid um, black and white halacha. It's not that you have to use the new coins. You should use the new coins. You have a mitzvah to use the new coins. If you don't, you lose a mitzvah. But it's still kosher. You are still yet to the mitzvah if you use the. You're still yet to the carbon if you use the old coins. And therefore, our mission didn't list this. All right. Now, the fourth thing in our brisa had been schiras batim. That if you sign a rental contract and it says, "I'm going to rent a house from you for this year," the year ends in Nissan. So Gemara says, if you would have said, I'm going to rent for a year, then you get 12 months to the day from when you began, because you want a year. But if you say this year, so then you just mean till the end of the year, and the year ends on Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Gemara says, that's only if you sign the contract from the first of Adar or earlier. If you signed it after Adar, then you get a full year. And the reason is because nobody says signs for this year, and it means for less than a month. Now, there are even those opinions that say that one day is considered a year. As far as king years, does not apply uh, here. So now the Gemara says, what's the source for this? How do you know that it's Rosh Chodesh Nisan that's considered to be the end of the year, if it's 30 days at least? Maybe it's Rosh Chodesh Tishrei. Maybe that's what he meant. Maybe when he wants to sign a contract on Tel Tishrei. So where it says, no, people generally don't move in Tishrei time because it's entering the rainy season. Um, people... Uh, rent a house for the entire rainy season. Therefore, when Tishrei is coming, they're not about to move. Now, our Brisa didn't, our Mishnah didn't list this halacha, and also the Tanakam and the Brisa didn't list this halacha, because he says people aren't going to move in Nisan either, because Nisan it sometimes rains. And therefore, you're not going to have such a uh, halacha, and therefore, you don't have this Rosh Hashanah of rentals for this year ending in Nisan. Okay, that concludes this So yeah, Now the Gemara refers back to our Mishnah. Next, the the next Rosh Hashanah on the list of Rosh Hashanah is on our Mishnah is Rosh Hashanah of Meiser Behema. When do we begin counting animals that are born for the mitzvah of taking one tenth out of every new animal that's born? So our Mishnah had said that it's um, Rosh Chodesh Elul uh, according to the Tanakhama and according to Shimon and Avalazar it's Rosh Chodesh Tishrei. So Mar says, so who's this Tanakhama? Who's the Stam in that Mishnah? It's Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir is the one who holds um, that is Rosh Chodesh El. So the problem is that the previous halach in the Mishnah had to be Rosh Shimon. The previous halach in the Mishnah had said that Rosh Hashanah L'Rigolim, Rosh Hashanah of three Yomim Tovim going by, as far as halacha of Balta Acher, that you should, that uh, we know the halach is you have to bring a carbon or something you owe to the base of Mikdash, you have to bring it within three months' time, within three Rigolim, within three Yomim Tovim time, if three Yomim Tovim go by, you violate the Isser of Balta Acher, of not delaying, and those three months count, they have to be in order, in, uh, uh, in the specific order, and therefore the year of three Rosh Hashanah, the year of three Regalim begins on, um, in the month of Nisan. It begins with Pesach first. So it begins in the month of Nisan. So that Rosh Hashanah the Regalim, that had to be Reb Shimon. So it comes out like this. The first Rosh Hashanah in the Mishnah, Rosh Hashanah the Regalim, that has to be Reb Shimon. 
Next, we mention Rabbi Meir's opinion as the Stam Rosh Hashanah from Isa Behema, because he says, because it says Rosh Hashanah is Rosh Chodesh Elo. Then it codes by name the arguers Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Laza. So what's going on? Who is the Mishnah? Is it Rabbi Meir? Is it Rabbi Shimon? What's happening here? So the answer is simple. It's Rebbe. And Rebbe holds like Rebbe Meir as far as Meister Behema. And holds like Rebbe Shimon as far as Regalim. And that's why he goes with the Stam without a specific name. He goes with those particular individuals. So then we have a problem now. The problem is as follows. Because we said earlier in the Gimel that um, when we say Rosh Hashanah the Regalim, it's not really Rosh Chodesh Nisan. It's really Tes Vav Nisan. Because Pesach, the cycle of Yom Yom Tovim begin with Pesach, that's on the 15th month of Nisan, not Rosh Chodesh Nisan. So if so, we end up having five Rosh Hashanahs in the Mishnah. We have Rosh Chodesh Elo, which is Maeser Behema, Rosh Hashanah of Maeser Behema. We have Rosh Chodesh Tishrei, which is Rosh Hashanah for a lot of things, Rosh Hashanah, uh, Shemitah, Yevol, and all kinds of other things. We have Rosh Chodesh Nisan, which is Rosh Hashanah for Melachim and Regalim. We ha- uh, which is, I'm sorry, just Malachim. We have the 15th of the month of Nisan, which is Rosh Hashanah for Regalim. It's the beginning of the cycle of Yom Tovim. And we have Shvat, either the 1st or the 15th, which is the beginning of Rosh Hashanah, which is Rosh Hashanah for Maiser of Fruits. So we have five things on the list. This is a problem. Now, if you don't say that it's Rebbe, we could get out of all of these. Why? Because everybody has only four. If you hold like Reb Shimin, so then you have Maiser Behema is on the list. But... Um, well, no, Maeser Behema is not on the list, because Maeser Behema is Rosh, is Rosh Chodesh Tishrei, and the Tishrei is on the list anyway, so you take off Rosh Chodesh El, that's not significant, so then you only have four. And if you hold that Rabbi Meir, so you have Rosh Chodesh El for Maeser Behema, but you don't have the 15th of the month of Nisan, because um, there is no Rosh Hashanah for the cycle of Regalim, according to Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir doesn't hold of the cycle of Regalim, he holds as soon as one Yantiv goes by, you violate Baal Ta'acher. So therefore, according to everybody, you have only four. And our Mishnah had said that there are only four Rosh Hashanahs. So you have a different number, maybe, of what the four are, but everybody in the Mishnah holds of only four. But if you say that it's Rebbe, that it's Rebbe, and he holds like Rebbe Shimin, and therefore he holds of um, the 15th of the month of Nisan as Rosh Hashanah Liragal, and he holds like Rebbe Meir, and therefore he holds that the first of El is Rosh Hashanah for Amayasa Behemoth, then he got five different Rosh Hashanahs. First of El, first of Tishri, first of Nisan, 15th of Nisan, and Shvat, Machokas. Which day in Shvat? So how does this work? So Gemara offers uh, two answers. The Gemara says um, that uh, it's uh, Rava and Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak. So Rava says that what um, what uh, Rebbe means to say is that there are five Rosh Hashanahs according to me. But everybody agrees to me that there are at least four. And then he gives a list of the four that everybody else in the Mishnah holds of, meaning I'm going to list off to you all the opinions. Each one of them has at least four. I myself happen to hold of five. But uh, that's not a problem. And Ahmed Yitzchak says there are four months of Rosh Hashanahs. El Tishri Nisan Shvat. In Nisan there are two, fine. But there are four months which have Rosh Hashanahs within them. Uh, and that's what we mean to say. Okay, now the Gemara quotes a Brisa that has two more Rosh Hashanahs. And Gemara wants to know, how does this work into the list? I'm going to have three answers. What are the two more Rosh Hashanahs? 16th of Nisan and Shavuos. What are they Rosh Hashanah for? So the Allah is you're not allowed to use grain which has taken root um, after this time. All that grain is usher until this day passes again. This is the day which you're allowed to use grain which took root beforehand. Now, the difference is as follows. The 16th of Nisan is when you bring the carbon Omer. That is what matir is, what permits all grain that took root over the past year for regular mundane use. Um, Shavu is when you bring the carbon Shteyalachem, that permits it for carbon Mincha. So these are both Rosh Hashanahs that allow grain to be used from now on. It's a new year as far as grain, and anything that takes root now afterwards will become Maser. So it's a new cycle. So Gemara says, so now, according to... Rava, you now have six Rosh Hashanahs, because you added two more. According to Rav Nachman Yitzchak, you only have five, because one of them is in the month of Nisan, and he said you only have five months worth. He said you have five months that have Rosh Hashanahs in them. All right, so we're not going to add another Nisan, but we now have Sivan, because Rosh Hashanah for Shtei Alechem uh, is in the month of Sivan. So Gemara offers two answers here. Two are very similar. 
and the Gemara has the same list of questions on the first two. The first two are that we're not going to list these two or one amongst the list of Rosh Hashanahs, either because the we only listed Rosh Hashanahs that begin at the beginning of the day. The day is the Rosh Hashanah, where it's the beginning of the day. These don't begin at the beginning of the day. They only begin when you bring the Karban Omer. And a slightly different answer is we don't list Rosh Hashanahs that don't happen automatically on the day. These Rosh Hashanahs only occur when you do something. So, again, they're very similar, but the idea is that the Rosh Hashanah, the cycle, doesn't begin until you bring the Karban Omer and you bring the Karban Shtayalachem. So either it's not a full day or it's dependent on an action. Those are two reasons that we're not going to list this as a Rosh Hashanah. So the Gemara says we have a couple of problems on this because there's a couple of other things which do seem to begin with an action and they also therefore begin not at the beginning of the day. And we did list them as Rosh Hashanahs. What are they? So the Gemara says, Yontif, Yontif, um, when do you violate the Isr Baal Ta'achar? You violate the Isr Baal Ta'achar when a uh, second Pesach begins. That th- three Yom Tev have already gone by and you didn't bring it. The next Yom Tev begins. When do you violate the Isr? So the, the, it would seem to be you violate the Isr when you bring the carbon Talmud in the morning on Yom Tev. Why? Because before that you couldn't bring a carbon. Your first opportunity to bring a carbon and you didn't bring it, that's when you violate the Isr. So you have to wait until the morning, so it's not a full day, and the carbon Talmud is brought. So my answer is no, you violate the Isr as soon as Yom Tev starts. You don't violate the Isr when you bring the carbon Talmud. You should have brought it before. You shouldn't have waited till Yontif. Yontif begins nightfall without any specific action on any human being's part. That's the deadline. You don't need to wait until the carbon the tumen is brought in the morning. Next question was uh, Yoivel. Yoivel doesn't begin until you blow the shaifer to introduce Yoivel. And therefore, it doesn't begin at nightfall and it uh, is dependent on action. The one says, no, we're holding like the opinion of Yechel and Benbreka. Who holds that Yevil begins on Rosh Hashanah? Whenever Rosh Hashanah begins, you don't need any specific action um, to help it out. Okay. Now the Gemara's uh, last answer to the question of why we don't list these two Rosh Hashanahs um, is that um, we only want to list. Rosh Hashanahs that are on the first day of the month. And this answers our previous question also. We listed first of El, first of Tishri, first of Nisan, and first of Shvat. We didn't list anything else. Now, we did mention in the Mishnah that Shvat is a machokis if it's the first of the 15th. Okay, so that one we said. That's a machokis b'sil b'shamim, we spelled it out. But other than that, we said three Rosh, Hash, three Rosh Chodeshes, which are Rosh Hashanah, and one that's a machokis. We're not going to list the 16th of Nisan, the 6th of Sivan, all these other things we're not going to list. So what do we learn in the daf today? We learned four other Rosh Hashanahs, Rosh Hashanah of months, when the cycle of months begins, when you can stop being Ma'aber the year, when you can no longer make a second Adar, when you have, uh, when you begin Shkolim, and when you have a contract that's for a house rental, when does that expire if it says for this year? Those are the, uh, all in the month of Nisan, the more gave a source from each of them from Sukim, six Psukim in Nach for months. Yiburin, we didn't need a uh, improve for because once it's Nisan, we said the halacha is you can uh, you can't make another adder anymore. Shkalim, we had a source of chadshe hashana, chadesh chadshe chadshem hashana, and schira sabatim. Imar said was logical because that's when the rainy season begins. Then we had the question about who is the author of the Mishnah. Imar said that it's Rebbe. He holds like Rebbe Shimon uh, that um, the fifteenth of Nisan. Is when you begin the cycle of Yom Tovim. He holds like Rabbi Meir that the first of El is when you have Meisur Behema. The Gemara added two other Rosh Hashanahs, Rosh Hashanah of the Karbana Omer and the Shteyalechem. The Gemara says we're not going to list those either because they begin with an action, they don't begin at nightfall, or because we're only listing Rosh Hashanahs that are on the first day of the month, not other days of the month. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland Shul and is presented by Rabbi Yitzchak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.